people go in the direction of spiritual death is it solves this problem of physical death coming into the world with Adam. And, of course, let's move on to the challenging passages, the Apostle Paul, and a little parenthetic note. Remember Philippians 2. I'm going to come back to that, what Paul believes in terms of his ancient understanding of nature. Death came through a man, Adam. You know the verses, Romans 5. Sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin. And you know something? This is the kicker of the passage, Romans 8. The whole, and that's exactly what you find in the text, creation was subjected to frustration, is in bondage to decay. And if you look at my old Bible, that was the second law of thermodynamics from my young earth creationist days, and has been groaning up to today. Talking physical death, we're not talking spiritual death. This is known as the doctrine of the cosmic fall. It is the belief that dramatic changes in the physical world occurred after the entrance of human sin. In judgment for sin, God launched decay, suffering, death upon the whole creation, not just a little corner of the Garden of Eden, etc. So, what do we do with that? We're two books people, the book of God's works and the book of God's words. And we have a number of geologists here, and you know the geological record. There's no debate on it. I've picked the vertebrates because they're the easy ones to remember. So we have the scientific facts where we see fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. If indeed the cosmic fall was true, this is the type of prediction we should see in the fossil record, and it doesn't even come close to that. And that's the problem. Physical death is before humans and sin in the book of God's works, but in the book of God's words, it's inverted. What do we do? To word, and I think there's a lot of different ways of spinning it. Notice the indefinite article. This is a solution, one way of spinning this approach to things. Let's go back to the Apostle Paul. What did the Apostle Paul accept or believe? Just gave you that passage. Paul believed an ancient astronomy and ancient geology, a three-tier universe, that Jesus Christ is Lord in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. He accepted a three-tier universe, no doubt about it. What else did the Apostle Paul believe? If Paul believed in ancient astronomy and in ancient geology, he'd also believe in ancient... Starts with a B. An ancient biology. So when it comes to origins, Paul accepted an ancient view of the origin of, starts with an L, life. And this is where the ancient Near Eastern literature is very helpful. If you go to these creation accounts, these origins accounts, de novo, that's Latin for brand new. So it's creation that is brand new. It's quick and it's complete. Why would the ancients think of such an approach to things? Think of phenomenological. What are they seeing? A cow gives birth to a cow, gives birth to a cow. You ask your mom and dad, what's the deal on cows? Cows, cows, cows. You ask your grandparents, a cow, a cow, a cow. They're as logical as we are. They don't stand on the shoulders of giants like we do. We would have believed the very same thing. So to retroject, think of retrospect, retroject, that's yakari, to throw back. They threw back their experience of everything they saw. There must have been some original cows. So when we go to Genesis 1 and we see the category of kinds, you know, created according to their kinds, this made perfect taxonomical sense and also sense in terms of how the world creates. So God created original cows. Now, I've got to get back to my computer. Does anyone want to suggest a creature we could do this very same little walk back with? Starts with an H. <laughs> Notice I'm close to the door here. I might be running out of here in just a sec. A human gives birth to a human, gives birth to a human. Mom, dad, what's the deal? Well, humans give birth to humans. Grad and dad, humans, humans, humans. They are as logical, as rational as us, but they don't have fossil records and anthropology, etc., and paleo, etc., etc. There must have been some original humans. Does anyone want to say what's going to show up in the next slide? The de novo creation of 
Starts with an A. You got it. Perfectly logical. This makes you a little queasy. I'd say don't sweat it. Accommodating. All right, so we have an ancient view of the origin of life. Here's where the fun starts. Therefore, to be perfectly consistent, we must have an ancient view of the origin of anybody? You're way ahead of the curve. And here's the kicker. A corollary or built into the definition of de novo creation, the creation of complete and full forms, is death has to come after that. So, and that's exactly what we see in the text, death after the de novo creation of Adam. Okay. If you're feeling it's a little tight, I completely empathize, and that's why. And if you think I put some of this stuff together in 10 minutes, I've been grieving a good portion of my professional life dealing with this. Okay, we've done the message incident principle. Well, what are we going to do for the Apostle Paul? 1 Corinthians 15, Romans 5 and 8. The message of faith. It's pretty easy. We see it over and over again. Humans are sinful. God judges sin. That's very clear. That's what you're definitely getting out of Genesis. But here's where it really gets tough for us as evangelicals because we love the word. We don't think message, we don't do this sort of academic message incident principle naturally. But the kicker, in particular, think of 1 Corinthians 15. This is the, and he starts with a G. What, what, what's going on in 15 in particular? This is the gospel. So what you're seeing in Paul, you've got the gospel in there. That Jesus died for sinful human be beings, rose physically, bodily, none of this ideas rising stuff. And put that in your tradition. Have a hard look at what happens to the church if you leave the bones in the grave. Give it 50 years and it basically gets gutted. Rose physically from the dead and offers the hope of eternal life. And I should be hearing some amens, please. <laughs> All right. Apostle Paul. Incident also had an ancient biology. Ancient view of the origin of life ancient view of the origin of death. Now, these are tightly intertwined. And if I have to give you a little aphorism, separate, don't conflate. And that's the challenge. Separate the message from the incidental ancient science, the ancient biology. Conclusion. I've only got two more minutes, so that allows me to just give you a conclusion and run out of here. <laughs> Number one, sin is not connected to physical death. Pretty clear what the fossil record has to say. Therefore, I don't think there's a sin-death problem. What's the problem ultimately? It's, it's hermeneutical. And I, agree, I understand. It's a very counterintuitive approach to things. Point two, sin entered the world, but not through Adam. Who's Adam? Adam is an ancient Near Eastern understanding of the origin of life. And for you engineers, you like your little mathematical things. Adam equals the firmament. Think about that. Adam equals the firmament. And most importantly, Jesus died for our sins. Because as I read in my morning devotions today in Acts 4, Acts 4.12, there is no other name, watch this, under heaven, pick it up, by which we can be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. I got one minute for one question. <laughs> Sir. That is a very reasonable uh, question, and I'd simply, if I could, you know, zoom this person right here today, I'd say, have a look at the crew in here and see the lives that have been changed by Jesus. In fact, I thought that was a brilliant testimony last night by Charlie Duke. 
I mean, I loved, I loved, I loved all the rocket stuff. You know, I, 